A lovely little tune fills the air. Jaunty, a bit repetitive, but carrying an unsettling undertone of crackling distortion. As you slowly awaken, a disorienting haze clouds your mind. It was the middle of the day a moment ago, wasn't it? You find yourself lying on a bed, covered with bare skin. Alongside you, two other beds, each with occupants whose faces reflect the same perplexity and bewilderment. The room, an amalgamation of rustic and foreboding, it features reclaimed hardwood floors contrasting against the imposing stone walls. As you rise from the bed, a disconcerting realization sinks in. You're fully clothed, yet memories of how you arrived here escape you. A thorough inspection of your belongings reveals nothing out of the ordinary, except for a small bit of parchment bearing an enigmatic message. CCE, admit one. Congratulations. And as you can see here on the stream, if you've got it open, we have some lovely little tokens representing our characters. We've got, uh, remind me, we've got Gruko here. We've got Tabi. How did you end up pronouncing it? Tabidi. Tabidi. <laughs> Tabidi, the last name, and Faradir, the Furbolg, all ready to experience whatever we've got planned tonight. So what do you want to do? You find yourself in this room confused. The floors came from Restoration Hardware. Oh my God. <laughs> Just who are you two? You see the character like, just like balancing himself because he's eight foot tall. How big is this room? Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have described the room better. That's my fault. <laughs> no, um, the, the room is 25 feet by 25 feet by 25 feet. It's a 25 foot cube. So um, I, I, I was going to do a top down map for this. And I was like, let's be extra and do like a 3D rendering of this map so that we can walk around it and explore it together. <laughs> so... My character, like, stretches, and you see, like, him go from eight foot tall to, like, almost twice that, because his arms are so long, and he just goes, Hey, I don't know. Uh, name's Faraday. How are you? I just woke up here. No idea how I got here. It's amazing. <laughs> you guys are so big. So much bigger than I am. I'm only really four foot eight, darling. You are absolutely adorable. Look at that. She's so tiny. Put my hand on her head and like pet it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he's Scottish. Uh, another failure on my part. Uh, I forgot to describe the piercing red Victorian-esque door sitting in front of you at the other end of this room. It appears to be the only way in or out. Um. I go to the door and investigate it. Seeing if there's anything suspicious. All right, roll me an investigation check. All right, what do I need for that? Uh, it's going to be a D20, and on mm -hmm. your character sheet under skills, there should be a call or a skill t titled investigation. Uh, it's usually your intelligence um, bonus, and if you're proficient in it, a proficiency modifier. All right, I've got a plus one in intelligence bonus, but it's not in a proficiency mark. All right, so it'll be a D20 plus one. All right. Five. Five. Close, so you walk up to this door and you just kind of look it up and down. And you're like, yeah, seems like a normal door to me. I go up to the door and I knock. All right. So you walk up to the door and give it a couple of rasps and listen for a response. And you wait and you maybe press your ear up to it a little bit and you wait. Maybe give it another set of knocks. And no one responds. Hmm. There's nobody's home. Does anyone have uh, good hearing? Maybe so they can hear some behind the door? Guessing that would be... Oh. Uh, uh, Faradir walks over to the door, puts his ear right next to it, and just listens. Uh, I'm guessing that'll be a perception? Uh, yeah, let's do a perception check. All right. Uh, okay, so that's 22. 22. Uh, so you listen for a while, and you don't hear 
really much of anything going on. Maybe you hear, you know, some creaks and moans, just the building itself, but nothing like, oh, that's definitely somebody walking around or nothing moving or nothing that would signify any significant activity happening anywhere beyond this door. I try and jiggle the handle to see if it's like locked or anything. Yeah, so if you give it just kind of like a, a quick jiggle, maybe not trying to open it, just, you know, seeing if there's any give, it feels unlocked. I open it. All right. <laughs> you open the door. Give me a second here. I got too many things going on. And before you stands another room of identical size, but which has a solid metal floor. And at the center of the room is a well with a glowing, shimmering liquid. On the left and right walls, there um, is nothing of importance right now, but we'll come back to that. <laughs> Got so, a little too ahead in my notes. <laughs> I follow behind the Furbolg. Fer- Faradir? Faradir yeah. wasn't? Yeah. I follow behind the Furbolg Faradir. And I use a perception to look for any hidden levers or certain items in the room. All right. Go ahead and roll me a perception check. All right. I have a proficiency and plus seven in perception. All right. I rolled an eight. So that's 15? Plus seven, plus eight. Yeah. Wait, seven plus eight? That's 15, 15. yep. You'd think I'd be better at math by now. Real quick, because like, I, (laughs) it's the nature of this damn game. I can't tell, am I actually hearing the music in the headphones? Do you guys hear the music? Does the stream hear the music? It's piano. Okay, it's like, I keep double checking the volume because I'm like, am I actually hearing it or am I like, hallucinating the sound? I hate this game. I hate this game so much. Anyway. no, Nick says it haunts his dreams. (laughs) Good. Good. I think Success. they can hear it. <laughs> Excellent. I just want to be. It sounds like it's coming from over there, even though it should be stereo in my headphones. It's weird. I don't. Anyway, as you step into the room, or as you all fully step into this room, um, Joni, you're, you're sort of perceiving, looking for anything, um, you know, of, of note in this room. You're enveloped in an otherworldly darkness. Uh, the only source of, a light, em, of light emanates from the center of the chamber, where the large mystical well sits. Its surface ripples like a pool of liquid stardust, reflecting a cosmic tapestry of constellations and galaxies. The door behind you closes, and the room begins to resonate with an ethereal hum, growing louder with each step. The air begins to crackle with energy, and the temperature drops. Suddenly, from within the... Um, I lost my spot. Suddenly, from within the depths of the font, a radiant burst of light erupts, forming a swirling vortex of interstellar colors. I keep losing my spot! It's ruining the vibe! Uh, The portal grows wider, revealing glimpses of distant nebulae and sparkling celestial bodies. The air around the portal shimmers with the raw power of the cosmos. You watch in awe as the portal stabilizes, and from its heart, emerges a figure, stepping gracefully into the room as if gliding on stardust itself. Her form is initially translucent, like being a pure astral energy, but as she fully manifests, her appearance solidifies, and she stands before you in all her cosmic splendor. Her hair flows like a cascading waterfall of stardust in a mesmerizing blend of pastel-like cotton candy sunsets. Her eyes glisten like twin stars, full of ancient wisdom and mystery, and simultaneously twinkling with an infectious sense of mischief. Her presence is both enchanting and enigmatic, captivating you in a web of cosmic intrigue. As she gazes upon you, a soft smile plays upon her lips. You admire her flowing robes, which seem to be woven from the fabric of the universe itself, and yet are adorned with patterns reminiscent of a vibrant Florida resort. Of note are her pants, which at first offer the illusion of a skirt before you notice the wide flowing legs, which offer the practicality and comfort of shorts. Uh, A versatile fashion choice, suitable for occasions of all kind. This being is clearly someone you can count on. 
and someone who really has their act together. The kind that would say, you know what, skin cancer? You're not gonna take me, cause I'm gonna take my own life. And then she did. She jumped off that cliff near her house on the Cape. She dove right into the water, hitting every rock on the way. And now there's this beautiful spirit out there in the cosmos. And you know what her name is? Rish! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, how you doing? <laughs> Say it one more time, I think the stream missed it. It's Trish, and I've got these culottes. Don't you like them? They're like practical, but not. But practical. You can use them as a parachute. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Why you be some goddess lass? Oh, yeah, um, there, there was a, a warlock that, that came through here, and I just, you know, had to give her some, you know, um, words of encouragement, you know, because she was just having a bad day. Just, just a terrible day. Let me move. <laughs> I reach out to poke the astral figure on the shin. What happens, Nolan? I don't know. Do you consent? No. <laughs> Just kick my foot. Kick my foot away. <laughs> don't. No, you don't. You don't touch people there, bud. It's just. It's just. You gotta. You gotta ask. I'm sitting there crying in a corner because I don't know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> Are you? Are you okay? Um, no. Do it. You know, I used I to take to portraits. Friend. We could be friends. I see that you're a warlock there, bud. You know, we could be friends. I could be your patron. I was someone's patron once. It was great. And you know, you have to wear the culottes though, but they're really good. They're really they're good. Really good. Okay. <laughs> All right, who gave me mushrooms? <laughs> I'm, I'm just the patron deity to the Midwestern warlocks, bud. <laughs> you know the great old one? That's me. <laughs> so, Faraday's, Faraday's eyes are just massive, and he's smiling like ear to ear. He just goes, well, he had a great big... Oh, why am I getting your accent now? No! <laughs> <laughs> Steve Irwin, Steve Irwin. <laughs> Midwestern Steve Irwin. Midwestern yeah. Steve Irwin. I, I have a feeling it's gonna happen. My accents are gonna just like shift so much. He's so infectious. It really is. I like I blanked on what I was gonna do for so Oh, it's okay. Really I stressed. could I have so many stories to tell you, buds. Did you know that I was a photographer when I was a living human lady? And um I always say that the face really, really is what people perceive you. What is a photographer? You take pictures. Isn't that just a painter? No. I don't know what's happening to my accent, Nick. <laughs> Steve Irwin is blending with Trish, and Trish is blending with Steve Irwin. <laughs> Where are you got your chocolate in my peanut butter, and you got my peanut butter in my chocolate. Huh? <laughs> I... I would like to go up to Trish and ask her, why are we here? Oh, I can't answer that for you, bud. That's just a mystery of the cosmos. I go up to Trish. I bow to her, as a samurai courtesy does. Uh-huh. And I ask her, might you know where we'd be headed next? Oh, I don't know. I'm just here. Like, I got stuck in this well there, bud. And now I'm here. At first I was working at Randall's, and then I threw myself off a cliff and hit every rock on the way down. And now and now I'm here in the deep ocean, and I just visit people in wells. That's, do you have change? Put it in the well. That's so sad. So, so what you're saying, what happened to... I have, I, hmm. It'll come back. The accent will come back. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so what exactly are you saying? Oh, I need about 350. <laughs> well, I, I probably have one gold coin. That's not enough, but that's that's I need I need it for the the island res, the island resort. Yeah, they've got um, souvenirs, and I need to take them back to the kids. Oh, okay. Money, please. I've checked my wallet to see if I have <laughs> them. Or check my coin pouch. Hey, Kaylee, you do have money. Um, you all trying, should have money. I'm trying to find it on your character sheet to help answer, but I believe That's you have funny. 20 gold poise I'll, pieces. I'll just, uh, I'll just put, like, five gold in her hand. It, it falls out of my hand and into the well, because <laughs> I'm not I'm not corporeal. Oh, his eyes get even bigger. <laughs> I'm a god. Didn't you know that, <laughs> bud? Like, I am the great old one. I died and punched him in the face and became him. So yeah, you're basically a mermaid in the water. Hey, the accent's back. Now I gotta keep it or I'll <laughs> lose it. Thank you, Taika Waititi. You your boil. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Taika, my oh. cousin. I have so many stories, bud. Which kind do you want to hear? Like, I, my favorite number is four. My favorite animal is a hen. I, I'm really into photography. Um, I've got a question. I've maybe got an answer, bud. Uh, could you explain to me how the concept of Randall's works? Oh, so it's it's a it's like a business, and you you go into the business, and you like exchange goods and services. It's a store. <laughs> <laughs> they have a membership too. Ooh, a membership. Yeah. Yeah. So, and deals, and you can get coupons. <laughs> Do you know what coupons are? Because you can get coupons. So, uh, coupon? Fair here, he's gonna walk to the well and like <laughs> stick his hand in it and see what happens. Why are you molesting my water, bud? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Uh, when you reach into the well, you're uh, at least as long as your arm is capable of reaching, you, you don't feel a bottom. Yeah, this fat bottom girls make the world go round. This has okay, no I've got an idea. Furbolg per person. Feridir? Feridir, was that correct? Uh, what if you took the little one there and you kind of just dipped her in with your hand? <laughs> no, no, don't do that, bud. Don't don't put the tiny scared one in there. She'll get real frightened and I I, I can't I can't deal with people who cry. It just makes me way too sad and then I just gotta leave. Are you crying? Are you crying? Oh, are you crying? Oh, 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 are you are you crying? I'm just so scared. She's so scared. Uh, I'm I mean, scaring we can her. Always put the mermaid in the water if that's what we're gonna be doing. Mm. I go over and like I grab her by like the scruff of the neck and just like starts walking over. Just all right. Dang it! There goes the accent. This is bullying. <laughs> and just put her in. And I like do. start. Now, now, listen here. I do not condone bullying. Boy, lad, let her at least con uh, consent to the thing. You can't be go waltzing up to anyone and just grab them by the nape of their neck. Puts her down. I say just, yes because like, I'm too horribly. terrified to say no. Put me in the whale. <laughs> Put me in the whale. Hey, you, li little, little one there, bud. What, what's yeah. your name? Oh, you're talking to Grinko Mihora. No, I'm, talk I'm, I'm talking to... The little one. Solid, Sorry, there are two of us here. The, the one that's three foot tall, bud. <laughs> okay. Give your balls a tug. <laughs> oh, you insist, man. <laughs> I know that reference. <laughs> hey there, you little one. What's your name? I'm a. Uh, my name is Tabidi. Tabidi. That sounds like TBD, bud. <laughs> My mom had a hard time coming up with the name. Yeah, if I were that small, I'd have a hard time coming up with a name too. Like Short Stack. <laughs> it's your name now. Oh, okay. We're best friends. I will always be with friends. you in your heart, bud. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, are you gonna be helping us on this journey? Oh no, I don't help. <laughs> Do you have uh, any advice? 
No, there, there's no advice from me, but I don't know. I'm just trapped in this room. Uh, there was a lady named Star. I was her patron deity. She came through here once. She was so confused, but man, her culottes look so good. But anyway, I'm going to go because you three are weird. I thought we were weird. Are weird ones? Hey, I'm a... I mean, okay. You're the one talking about shorts and photography, whatever that is. Okay, well, no, I'm leaving. I will always be in your heart, TBD. No last name, ah. Bye. Bye. All right. And she's gone. <laughs> Those of you not watching the stream might not uh, understand what just happened, but you know what? Trish is gone. <sighs> It was a bad idea to start drinking a beverage during this. <laughs> Understood. So, with Trish gone, everything sort of returns back to normal. The lights return to normal, the temperature returns to normal. Uh, and you notice on the uh, far side of the wall, which I hastily uh, alluded to earlier, um, is a button with a carving of a hand above um, uh, on, on the wall, and above the button are some numbers, 0 through 20, carved into the wall. We investigate the numbers. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, really, what I, other choices do you have? I've presented you with no options at this point. And your start, fates are entirely in my hands. I start going through the numbers, touching them. As you approach the numbers, uh, you begin to hear some subtle clunks and whirs and other distant noises as the number 20 above the door begins to glow blue. The number 19 illuminates, and then 18, and then 17. Oh, Dom, it's calm down, sixteen. What are we going to do? And then 15. I go hide behind the well. And then 14. I hide with him. Uh, as you hide behind the well... The shimmering liquid in the well begins overflowing, quickly filling the room up to your ankles. 14. I go and press 13. the button. Uh, as you press the button, the, the water sort of stays at its current level, and then the number 20 illuminates. 20. 19. I go and press 18, the button again. <laughs> 20. 19. 18, I start looking around for 17, a door on the walls. 16. Uh, there is, uh, once again, a door that I, I have failed to tell you about. Um, if, let's just preemptively say that from now on, there will always be a clear... Oh, you're, my you're video going. disconnected. I touched a cable. One second. Did it come back? back? There we you're go. I, I wiggled a cable. Oopsie. Um, right. Let's so just say from now on, every room that you enter there will be a clear red door as the exit. So there is yet again, another clear, uh, another red door as the exit, as the numbers count down from 17. Let's wait till it into the next room, why don't we nice? 15, okay. 14, 13, 12, we, we head towards 10, the doors. We head towards the red door. And the door is locked as the numbers that. turn yellow. And the liquid once again begins rising. I rushed I the nine. I your shoulders. <laughs> What'd you say, Jonah? I rushed to punch the button. The the water once again freezes where it's at, and the number twenty illuminates. Twenty. I punch it again. Twenty. Punch it again. Twenty. Assume I'm gonna keep punching it to restart it at twenty until we figure something out. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> So yeah, it, uh, until you tell me otherwise, I'm gonna assume that you just keep hitting the button and just keeping it at 20. So when you want that to change, you let me know. We'll do. Hey, my mate in the water, are you good with lock picking by any chance? Oh, actually, I uh, do not know, I'm not. My swords are sharp though. Do you have any, how about your blade? Is your blade any sharp? <laughs> oh yeah, and I forgot to mention. So he pulls out a giant scimitar and he just goes, Oh yeah, I could I could give that a shot, and I <laughs> smack the door. <laughs> you you heave it real good. Go ahead and roll me an attack roll. All right, let me. Ah. Nope. Where is it? Uh, where is? Okay, there it is. Oh, mm. That's a nat one. So <laughs> plus four is a five. 
<laughs> so I mean, you swing at the door and you you contact the door, but you don't really get a good strike at it. So nothing really happens. Throw your sword at it. We won. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you I need help attacking with your sword? Oh, <laughs> Faradir backs out of the way of the door. <laughs> roll an attack roll. Fuck it. You th- improvised weapon. You throw your huge great sword as a three foot halfling. I'm gonna roll them all. <laughs> I, I really just need to know what the d20 says, but you're welcome to roll all of them. Okay, I'll do the d20. <laughs> 11. 11. 11. 11. No minus. 10. No mi- minus 10. Is that what you said? <laughs> what? I, I'm not getting this one. <laughs> I'm not getting this one. Even pause. Hey, pause, pause. I'm sweating. Pause. Hold on. Um, minus, I am. I am minus. I am minus one in strength. <laughs> So that's 10 minus, no, that's 11 minus 1 equals 10. All right, well, I'm going to tell you now that regardless of your modifier, you leave your sword, um, but it it clunks into the door, but doesn't really do anything. My poor sword. Sorry, I needed you. <laughs> oh, don't be so sad about it, TVD. You did your best. You're my new best friend. Oh, oh lovely. We are now, Fred. I stand on his shoulders now. <laughs> uh, is the doorknob metal or is it? Or, it's is it? Uh, all the doors are going to be identical. The the door itself appears to be made of wood, and the doorknob uh, is you know brass or whatever. Door dear, I want are made you to of. take your eight foot tall furry body. I want you to ram that door like it's your life depending on it because it is. Uh, so first off. Uh, I'm not a fairy. I'm a furbog. Second, I'm gonna cast. I said, I said furry, not fairy. Well, either way, it's insulting. So I'm gonna cast uh, uh, heat metal on the doorknob. All right. Um, <laughs> just a moment while I refresh my memory on something I did not expect to happen at all. <laughs> Keep pressing the button. You got this. I believe in you. So the doorknob does begin to heat, uh, begin glowing red hot, much like uh, Home Alone. Um, But are you going to try to, like, break it off or something, I assume? Yeah, I'm going to use the the butt of the uh, scimitar. The The uh, pummel. Yeah, the pummel. So seeing the doorknob glowing red hot, you, you go to hit it with the hilt of your weapon, expecting it to sort of give in some manner, bend, break, something. You've, you've heated it to glowing red hot, um, but it is solid. It just does not budge. Well, I'm all in on ideas. I go and knock on the door. <laughs> Why not? Uh, hello? Oh, no, uh, nobody's there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, come in. <laughs> no, just kidding. Still no one. <laughs> Perhaps it was a you know a hopeful thought you had. You imagined somebody try, bel- try, beckoning you. Try looking inside of the well for any clues. I see as I continue begrudgingly pushing a button. What happens when it hits one? Maybe something good happens. Hmm. <laughs> Hey, look, it's Trish! <laughs> oh, shit, red house! Oi. Uh, Druid, I don't suppose you have any spells that can help someone breathe underwater? Uh, I mean, like, check. God damn it. My warlock patron is being a fucking nuisance. <laughs> uh, so, breathe underwater? That's a no. Uh, I can make a whirlpool, if that'll help. Sure, come on. Uh... Sure, can you whirlpool this water into the well as it fills up the room? Isn't it coming from the well? Oh wait, it is coming from there. I wasn't paying attention there. That's my bad. What if we try to clog the well? 
could you make some sort of stone object to clog it? Uh, uh, that'll be a no. Wait, wait, what does that do? That's, yeah, no, nah, that's a no. That, that's a no. Can we ask that question? What's in the room again? What's what available? Yeah, for us? absolutely. So this room is a 25 foot cube, much like the other rooms. The walls and floor are made of solid metal with no seams that you can find or nothing apparent, despite what the map may represent. The door that you came in from, the door that you're leaving out of, and the magical well in the middle that Trish appeared from and now is filling the room as the numbers count down. This is my favorite part, because as soon as they realize, I'm talking to the audience now, by the way, as soon as they realize, it's going to be like a light bulb goes off in their head, and they're going to understand the psychological torture I'm putting them through tonight. So, fair idea, what he's going to do, he's going to jump into the well. What's that, sorry? Uh, I'm going to, fair idea, he's going to jump into the well. Okay. Uh, do you want to, like, try to, like, explore the well, or are you just getting in it? Explore. Okay. I want to put my seed in. I'm still pushing the button. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's just sitting there, you got this! I believe in you! Go let me strong to death! So, as you're, because you're, what, seven foot something? Eight, or... eight foot even. Eight. Okay. So, you can, as you're in the water... Maybe it's because you're just, you're at the surface level now and you can kind of see it. You do see, like, it It seems like it opens. I mean, it's hard to sell, say because it's underwater, but it looks like it opens into, like, a big tank, like a reservoir. It's probably where the water's coming from, but nothing really happens to you when you jump in. All right, I'm going to dive in and see if I can see, like, a, uh, a, a wheel to turn off the water. That's really smart, and in a typical D&D game, I would probably reward that creative thinking. Uh, but in this case, it's just nothing helpful. It's just a reservoir of water with no egress okay. or ingress points. So, guys, <laughs> we, have, we have a well and two doors, buttons, numbers... And not much else. Wait, wait. I think it's coming to me. I think I'm getting what smart people like to call an idea. Uh, you said that there's a handprint where the buttons are, right? Yes. I'm going to walk over and I'm going to put my hand in it. Excellent. Oh, sorry. Let me rephrase for clarity. The handprint is on the button, as if to oh. say push. Like on my button? Yes. So I'm going to hold it. You're going to hold it? Yes. It'll just stay at 20. It, like, when you're pushing it, it kind of like 20, and then it starts to count, but when you're holding it, it just stays at 20. So, do we... Do we just let it count down, y'all, or do... Well, do we... uh... It's been nice knowing you for the 20 minutes that we've known each other. Uh, that one lady was weird, but, uh, <laughs> I guess this is the end, so... <laughs> let's go! Bye. I hold right. my sword close to me, like with my precious child, and I wait for the end to come. <laughs> oh, we're not gonna be dying like this. I have been living too long to die drowning, but maybe something will come of it. All right, everybody taking a deep breath. I release the button. You release the button. The 20 switches from 20 to 19, and then 18. And then 17, counting down as numbers do. Once again, when it hitches, hits 10, the numbers switch to yellow. Nine, eight, seven, six, the lowest <laughs> it's been before. The numbers turn to orange. Can you open that door before. when it reaches zero? What it, what's your plan? Open the door when it reaches the when, end when of the it reaches zero. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. So the numbers turn orange. The liquid begins rising once again, quickly this time, past your waist. Six. Five, four, the room goes pitch black, except for the glowing numbers above the door, which turn a bright red as you feel the liquid start to begin to splash your neck. Three, 
I have dark vision, by the way, so I can see in the dark. Excellent. One. Zero. And before you can even think about diving for the door to see if it opens, the light turns on, the liquid nearly immediately drains, and the door swings open. Yay! Guys, we did it! Whoever is the psychopath that thought of that, I want to shake him around the neck. Let's find out who put us here. We don't even know who that is. Good thinking there, little one. We're just... I saw my life flash before my eyes. It was kind of boring. Do you guys <laughs> ever wonder why we're here? That? Well, okay, so we are going... So we're going to the next room now? Yes, you were greeted by a dimly lit chamber with stone walls adorned with peculiar Mueller murals of mischievous looking gnomes. A sign sits in front of you, uh, which reads, Beware the Gnomes. The room is filled with an assortment of chests, boxes, and crates of various sizes, some looking ornate, I'll get to you in a second, uh, some looking drab, but they're all seemingly arranged in some kind of path to walk around the room. Uh, at the far end of the room is another door with um, several padlocks attached to it. Uh, as you step into the room, you can't help but feel a sense of caution. The sign warns you to beware the gnomes, and the chests appear to be guarding their treasures with mischievous gazes. The path forward seems treacherous, but perhaps there's more than meets the eye. All right. Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking here. So some of these chests has got to be giving us the keys to open them doors. Nah, we have to be careful about gnomes, and I'm going to say mimics. Because dungeons always have a treasure chest mimic in them. Well, that's, that, that's smart thinking. Uh, I think the wee one should uh, start using that big old sword of ours and start cracking. Hmm, agreed. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Come on, you've got this. You can take that hefty blade and you can smash all these chests. They're nothing to you. I don't, I don't think I can. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I am, I am going to, I'm, I'm, I look at the chest closest to me. Mm -hmm. The sword in my hand, but it's dragging on the ground. And I quickly just flip it open and then drop my sword and run away as fast as I can. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, it's my favorite time of the night. It's the time <laughs> when they realize what is about to begin. Instantaneously, as you flip the chest open, three gnomes materialize and leap out at each of you, punching you strongly into the groin. <laughs> Your vision fades, and you wake up, a lovely little tune filling the air. As you slowly awaken, a disorienting haze clouds your mind. It was the middle of the day a moment ago, wasn't it? You rise from the bed, fully clothed. Your memories of how you arrived here escape you. The same wood floors, the same stone walls, nothing out of place except for a small bit of par parchment which simply reads, CCE. Admit one. Congratulations. <laughs> you diabolical bastard. I love it. Oh, you. You just done. So do we have... We don't have any memory. Uh, you do remember... It's so theatrical. You don't remember how you got here. But you remember what you just went through. Whew. What? What was them late wee buggers parking in their fists? Yeah, they sprinkle some gnome dust in our face or something. All right. So, I'm gonna. Are 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 my jewels okay at this point? <laughs> That's what I'm gonna ask. <laughs> oh, they're a little sore. If you like, kind of peek in, they might be a little swollen. You're like, man, that must have happened before. Like, <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't know about y'all, but uh. That bloody hurt. I'm gonna I, check under the bed, just in case. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move to the. That's damn it! I'm getting the sea burn now. <laughs> I love how contagious it is. I'm gonna be heading over to the door now and seeing if everything's in order as it was before. Yeah. Do you open it? Yes, I open it. The same exact room on the other side. Hmm. 
Was there anything under the beds? Because I checked under them. <laughs> there was not. Maybe some dust bunnies, but... I sit there staring at my ticket. <laughs> refusing to get up. I walk over to the wee one, and I say, Listen here, loss. What just happened was a terrible tragedy. But, I can assure you, as long as we keep our wits about us, we're gonna make it through this. No. <laughs> no. We're all gonna die. We're all, we're all gonna die. Tell you what, we're if we all die, die, I'll buy you a drink in Valhalla. Okay. No. Okay. All right. I pat her on the back. Chalky milk? Yes, you can oh, have chalky yeah. milk too. Okay, I'll go. All right. There, there. You want to chalky milk? I was doing things. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but if we're gonna be drink, what? Yeah, I'm with you. If if we're gonna be drinking, uh, I'll take that. Yeah. All right. Let's head back into that room and try not to drown again. I'll be good. pushing the button. Yes. Okay. All right. So you do the same thing as last time. Push the button. Let it count down. Yes. yes. All right, same exact thing happens. Starts at 20, begins counting down. The numbers start to change colors. The room begins filling with water. As the numbers hit zero, the lights turn on. Room instantly drains. Doors open. <coughs> and once again, you're greeted by this room saying, beware the gnomes. I don't want to open the chest again. No, 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 no. First off, I don't do that. let's look around to see if there's any sort of pattern with the chest to see if there's any differences. Or there maybe. are definitely different styles of chests. Some are iron bound, some are just, you know, storage chests. Mm -hmm. um, some are more ornate looking than others. Uh, how, roll an investigation check to like search the room. Damn it, I rolled a seven plus one. Mm -hmm. Is anybody else helping him search the room? I'll help them. Okay. Um, Thank you. I don't remember the official assist rules. I think it just gives you a plus bonus, but go ahead and roll investigation. Oh, that's me. Are any of the chests breathing? Um, you know, <laughs> not in this room. I got a seven. You got a seven as well? Yeah. Oh, fuck it, there's nothing going on in this room. Eventually you find it. Um, around this corner here is a very shiny looking golden chest hidden behind some larger crates. Can I pull out my katana. Katana is out. All right. Now, what we're going to do here is that we're going to smash that chest and hopefully any gnomes that are inside of it, and maybe we'll find a clue as to how to get out of here. Understood? I ran to the opposite end of the room. Well, thank you for being such a team player. <laughs> you got this. I believe yeah, you. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll back you up. Uh, if anything jumps out, I'll have some spells prepared. All right. You're so, doing great, guys. I kick open the chest with my foot, keeping my blade at the ready. You kick open the chest, and no matter where you hit in this room, a chest flies open and a gnome materializes, leaping out, punching you in, right in the, in the groin. Do we not have time to react? No, because this is a horrible, horrible experience. And your vision oh, goes blind. Oh and a lovely little tune fills the air as you slowly awaken. A disorienting haze clouds your mind. It was the middle of the day a moment ago, wasn't it? You rise from the bed fully clothed, yet your memories of how you arrived here escape you. The I same wood floors, balls. the same stone walls, nothing out of place except for a small bit of parchment, which simply reads, CCE, admit one, congratulations. I rip up my ticket. As you throw it onto the ground, it disappears. And then you, like, you're like, whew, okay. And then you just kind of put your pants into your pocket, and then there's one there. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, he just, like, gets up and charges through the doors, opening it. He goes over and presses the I button. I run after him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just before you can even like get into the room, he's already just and it's starting to count down. Like, come on, let's go! And I'm running along with my little legs because I don't want to be left behind. You don't want to be man maids in the water, so let's fuck it. 2019, blah, 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 10. Lights on, water drain, door open. Beware the gnomes. Immediately, when the other door opens, 
I'm gonna step into the room and I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna cast Thunderclap, <laughs> which has a range of 100 feet, and they must all make constitution saving throws, and if they fail, well, then they get the pain. Oh, I like that spell. Aren't we so on you, wet? Fairy dear. <laughs> Aren't we so wet? It's thunder, not yes. lightning. It's an auditory. It's like a big boom of sound. Got it. I cover my ears. (laughs) I also cover my ears and my bullets. Go ahead and roll. Uh, Well, they have to save for it. Oh, I thought it was half damage if save. So they have if it's if they save, it doesn't happen at all. Yeah, if they save, they're they're fine. Oh, gotcha. Well. Let's just say, because they are in the chests, you don't know if they save or not. So let's just roll some damage and we'll find out. Sure, that that is a uh, seven. I have noted your seven damage. <laughs> All right. Either the eardrums are ringing, or they're gonna jump out and hit us in the jewels again. So either way, be wary. Who has... Uh, Kaylee, I see your character sheet. I, I should have pulled up everybody else's. Does anybody have a passive perception of 12 or more? Uh, I have plus 7. You probably do have a passive perception of more uh, than 12. My passive uh, perception is uh, 17. Okay, so both of you, after you cast the thunderclap, maybe it's just the booming sound that kind of cleared some haze from your, your head, but... As you're like formulating what you want to do, you kind of look at the door at the other end of the room with all the padlocks, and you get the feeling you might want to take a closer look at it. All right, we go over to the door. I go over to the door at least. I'm keeping a vigil eye all around with some spells at the ready. I'm sitting down in front of the Beware of Gnome sign stand. I have one sword in my hat, and I've got my other hand covered in my bullocks. <laughs> so you get to the door and you look at it there's you know there's probably six or seven padlocks on it but when you look like real closely at it you realize the padlocks are attached to the door but there's nothing like attaching the padlocks and the door to the frame they're just on the door I push open the door slowly it swings right open I am sad <laughs> I am probably never going to have children. <laughs> All right, uh, before they get out of the boxes, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Run, run, run. <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, come on, what you want. Come on. <laughs> come on, TBD. I'm coming. <laughs> this room appears similar to the previous room with various containers, such as chests and boxes and barrels, all arranged chaotically throughout the room. However, there is one significant difference, a sign near the adventure uh, entrance that reads, Adventurer Tip. Mimics are great at hiding in plain sight. I draw out my wakizashi, so I have both my long sword and my short sword in hand. I'm... Confused. <laughs> Do you know what a mimic is? Let's start there. Yes, I okay. played Dark Souls. Understood. <laughs> <laughs> Just making mean. sure that basic bit of information was not lost on you. But they drop good loot. Hey, you know, sometimes. Maybe not this game, but sometimes. Yeah, not this game. Probably not this game. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I the would room like is... to oh, go ahead, sorry. investigate the door. The one leading out of it, or the one you came from? The one leading... I feel like the one I came from probably is not... Yeah, there's there's nothing special about it. The, the one leading out of it um, just appears to be a regular door. Um, there isn't really anything special about this room. Uh, amidst all the chests and boxes, you do see a couple of chairs. Uh, some of them are, are basic wooden chairs. There is another golden chest, uh, but there's also a sort of red... Um, throne-ish looking chair. Um, but that's really about it. I try to open the door. It appears to be unlocked. 
I feel like that's too easy. That's way too easy. Oh, it's a real. I reached for the handle. The second time I missed it. I think it's unlocked, but I can't reach. Someone come open the door. I walk over there, and I put my ear up to the door to see if it makes any noise or breathing. Uh, Roll a perception check. All right. Twenty! Not twenty, you fucker! The one thing that can't save you, but not 20. Um, you hear what sounds like outdoors. On the other side of the door? Mm-hmm. Freedom. <gasps> Guys, we can leave. Yeah, hey, careful there, careful. We don't know if it's a magical room or if it's I the actual... I don't reach the door anyway. I love watching the chat just like they feel the foreboding, foreshadowing presence of stuff and they're just like, something's about to happen. And then contrasting that with all of your faces and different levels of pain and anxiety and misery. And so I this don't is, know why this is what I enjoy my players this. feel like. Oh my god, I forgot it. <laughs> hey, oh my um, god, I've forgotten. Favor dear, could you do me so could you do me a favor? Uh, what's the favor? Could you probably do another thunderclap to make sure there's no funny business going about in this room if we try to leave? Uh, I mean, I I can try, but, uh, either you have to be behind me. I'm gonna run around. I have to be in front of you. I I will say, um, I don't think you all had done anything yet uh, when we had reset, but each time that you um, wake up feeling confused and hating me more, uh, your spell slots and everything are reset as if you took a long rest. Oh, oh. cool. Okay. Uh, so cast away, baby. <laughs> so I walk over to the door and I, I turn around so they're behind me and I just go, alright, I'm gonna bless the rains down in Africa. <laughs> Would be Australia, but we don't get right. All right. Once again, roll your damage, and we'll do Schrodinger's mimics. Oh God! Whoo! That's a twelve. We got double sixes. Wow, my Texan accent came out, but okay. <laughs> All right. That's a very good thunderclap that you just did, but um, nothing seems to change in this room. Uh, I would advise that we just go through the door, fingers crossed, and hope the mimics don't bite our jewels. All right, I send guard as my friends pass through the door. Oh, I think my camera flipped again. I, that cable is real buggy. Okay, um, you go through the door, and let me open it up here on this other computer. The room before you, uh, which you enter without any issues, uh, is still enclosed by the four walls, but it contains a natural and earthy floor. Uh, But the floor is littered by bear traps, strategically placed to create a hazardous path across the room. The traps are set in their sharp teeth gleam menacingly in the light, and at the center of the room lies a chest surrounded entirely by by traps. I take my katana. And of course, the door on the other side of the room that I always fail to mention. I take my katana and I start sweeping the ground of the bear traps. And to like try to set them off or something? Yes. Okay. Uh, as you strike the first one to sort of disarm it by triggering it before you get there, uh, the room or the ceiling above you slides open with tremendous speed and 13 bears fall from the ceiling, mauling you to death. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> you find yourself back oh, into the beginning room with a lovely little tune filling the air. As you slowly awaken, the what disorienting the haze open? clouds your mind. It was the middle of the day a moment ago, wasn't it? You rise from the bed fully clothed, <laughs> yet memories of how you arrived here escape you. The Bear same wood floors, traps. the same stone walls, Bear nothing out traps. of the place except for a small bit of parchment, which simply Bears. reads CCE, traps. admit one. Congratulations. <laughs> it was a trap of bears. Yeah, oh, niggas! 
All right. Hey, oh. um, name uh, Gru Gruko. Gruko. <laughs> yes. Hey, could you could you put your sword up, please? <laughs> sorry, lost. Sorry, lost. Yeah. I don't mean to frighten you. I'm just very <laughs> upset with this intricate and elaborate scheme that just infuriates me. I did return. I've never uh, been in this sort of situation before. So, I want to go home. I, I, I think it's, oh, I think I it's my turn. I'd TBD on the shoulders be like, there, there, we're going to get you home. I'm going to stay right in my bed and hope that Goldilocks and the three bears don't show up. <laughs> Good night. It's been great. <laughs> Love you all. I am going to move forward back to the rooms. TBD, Fairy Deer, you coming with me? I poke Fairy Deer until he wakes up to tell him to come along. Come on, I buddy, poke Fairy Deer go. with the tip of my sword. Not enough to make him bleed, just enough to make him go, ooh. I just want to poke him. No attack. I just want to poke him. <laughs> he just sits up and is like dragging his feet the entire way. He's just. <laughs> so now let's go through I the grab his whole hand and I'm like, again. I, I want to grab his hand like this. <laughs> like a small child leading their dad. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> let's go. We gotta keep going. <laughs> You go through the water room, you go through the uh, the gnome room, you go through the other gnome room, or the other mimic room, or they all blend together to me. Um, and then you arrive back into the, the bear trap room. <laughs> all right, now, I have an idea. It's a little bit unorthodox. Faradir, I need you to toss me. Uh, all right, but how big are you, mate? Four foot eight and 155 pounds. Ah, oh, this will be like tossing a baby into a dingo's nest. All right, you're gonna throw me onto that golden chest over there, and I'm gonna see if I can open it. <laughs> so I pick him up and I just heave him. <laughs> Do I have to roll anything? Uh, yeah, given your size differences, I'm gonna say that uh, that you just you do it. You can pinpoint it. Uh, throw Whoa. this. Okay. So I land on the chest. You sure do. All right. So I put my ear to it, listening for anything. Um, you don't really hear anything. Maybe like a seashell type situation, but um, doesn't appear to have any sounds coming from inside of it. All right, I'm carefully looking up at the ceiling as I'm opening up the chest. As you Trying open up the chest, don't get molded up. As you slowly open up the chest, looking at the ceiling and kind of eyeing back and forth, you begin to see the inside of the chest and you're kind of quickly darting back and forth, unsure of what's about to happen. And you reach a point where a gnome magically manifests, punch you in the <laughs> ground, and you the oh, 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 of the gosh, room, where a lovely little tomb fills the air. And as you slowly awaken, a disorienting haze clouds your mind. It was the middle of the day a moment ago, wasn't it? You rise from the bed fully clothed, yet memories of how you arrived here escape you. The same wood floors, the same stone walls, nothing out of place except for a small bit of parchment, which simply reads, CCE, admit one. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm going. I'm just gonna go go for the doors now. I'm not gonna touch a damn thing when I'm going through these rooms. I'm just gonna go in and open the doors. Agreed? Well, uh, I, I think that sounds like a wonderful plan. Hopefully, we can stick to it. But uh, let's go. All right. Okay. You do it. You go through the water room. You go through the gnome room. You go through the mimic room. You reach the bear trap room. You're just going to try to tiptoe lightly through all the traps to get to the other door. And go ahead and everybody trying to walk through it, just roll me an acrobatics check, which is going to be a d20 plus the number next, next to acrobatics. I am proficient plus six. Hey, you got a good chance. Let's hope your friends don't fail. Seventeen. Oh, I don't know if I like Jaime's face. Jaime? <laughs> Five. 
No! I do apologize. It seems that all I am big and lanky, and I do not have a hand-eye coordination. I got an eleven. Plus an eleven. Two. I got. I got thirteen. So as Tabidi and Gruko reach the far door, uh, <laughs> Faradir is just behind you, and you're like, "I think we made it." Did. Nothing's about to happen. Yeah, we, nothing's happened to us. You got the hand on the door. You feel the door is unlocked. And as you start to open it, you hear, Ka-chink! and you see Faradir's foot stuck in the trap as the ceiling oh. flies open and the bears fall down and a lovely little tune fills the air as you slowly awaken, a disorienting haze clouding your mind. It was the middle of the day a moment ago, wasn't it? You rose from the bed fully clothed, yet your memories of how you arrived here escape you. The same wood floors, the same stone walls, nothing out of place, except for a small bit of parchment, which simply reads, CCE, admit one, congratulations. <laughs> and Kaylee, don't cry. <laughs> I swear to Bear Deer, I give him a hug and be like, Bear there, lad. There, there. It's You're just, a big it, boy. It looks so shiny. I, I wanted to touch it. <laughs> this time, we're not going to touch. The door is unlocked. We're just going to maneuver. You're going to follow us step for step this time. So that way, we're kind of, you know, we're kind of. Caravan in it. Through the gotcha. oh, It's kind of thematic, too, because of how huge you are. I mean, the other ones can kind of, like, nimbly walk through it, and you're just kind of like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Shall we do this dance again? Gents? Yeah. All right. Let's through the rooms. Through the water room, through the gnome room, through the mimic room, back to the bear trap room. Roll the acrobatics. Damn it. Proficiency plus six. Damn it, it's a four, so that's a ten. I'm gonna hope this is enough. Eleven. I got a nine. No, I got an eleven. We have a nine, ten, and eleven. I got an eleven, it's plus two. Peeling back the curtain here a little bit, you all are very lucky that each attempt reduces the DC, because otherwise oh we'd have been starting right back over. <laughs> Oh, the DC God. this time was 10, so you barely got it. <laughs> you open the door, feeling a little bit of relief, maybe. Hang on, I gotta find the door over here. And entering the room, you feel a mix of curiosity and apprehension as you notice a series of pits in the middle of the room, which resembles a large tic-tac-toe board. Uh, there appears to be no way around the pit as it's surrounded by a deadly green mist. And on either side of the door are pillars whose tops appear to be shaped like X's and O's. Okay, I'm thinking here, we gotta push them pillars into those pits. Well, uh, it sounds like a plausible way to go, so let's right. give it a shot. Shall we play a game then? Yeah, who's X's and who's O's? I'll play a rock, paper, scissors for him, mate. All right. I don't get it, but uh, I, I guess. Well, how does paper beat rock? Because rock rips through paper, and rock is heavier than paper. Wait, is this like the 50 kilograms of feathers and 50 kilograms of steel thing? Oh, yeah, that's be, that'd be a good way of looking at it, yeah. Alright, I guess you win, so go ahead. Alright, I'm going to move now. Nah. No, no. I, I fell in the pit. Beauty. All right, so X's are first, correct? I haven't played this game since I was a wee lad. I'm going to move the X into... Yeah, I guess there, Nolan. I guess there. Uh, where? The middle? Uh, no, I'm going to move it right into that first, what, that first pit. Ah, uh, the first one coming out of the door? Yeah, central. Okay. 
first. And you're moving the X first, correct? Yes. Just want to double check. Don't want to change your mind? No. Okay. You you find that the pillar is actually surprisingly light. You think you you look at it like, oh, I'm probably gonna have to like really heave this. No, it's 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 large, but it's it's definitely meant to be moved. Um, so you plop the X <laughs> down into the first pit. And nothing happens. Uh, the the top does come flush with the the holes though. Hold it. It's your turn, fairy dear. All right. I'll push the. Uh... First O into the middle. Okay. So you kind of like step over the X to get it out there and you drop it in. Nothing happens. Uh, Tip it in, do you want to join in on this game? No, I'm okay. I'm just happy to watch. <laughs> <laughs> just like, sitting take... over there rocking. Just... <laughs> I want to go home. I want to go home. I'm sitting like... there talking to my sentient sword. <laughs> Help. It's she been asleep. A it's, it's been asleep this whole time, and I'm trying to get it to wake up because it's usually pretty smart. It tells me things to do, but it's just not saying anything right now, and I don't know what to do. Sword's still too. What does my sword say? Your sword doesn't talk. What are you, stupid? My sword talks. I think your sword's well, made in it's Japan. Awesome pack there. I'm going to move that next X column while I'm feeling offended into the pit to fill up the first row. All right. You drop the X into the far... So you've got now a line going straight across mm-hmm. and nothing happens. Uh, I feel like we have to finish this game. Otherwise, we're probably not going to get to cross. Fame. I think I've seen this in a movie somewhere. Oh, uh, what if it's the winning... The winning one forms a bridge? What if we have to let someone win? So I'll go to the far opposite side and I'll put uh, my first O in that so he has a clear way for the X. All right then, I'm gonna put the X in the way to do three in a row. Far opposite side, why am I not under? Oh, okay, I understand what you're asking now, I think. I'm explaining it terribly because my intelligence may be high, but my wisdom is low. Oh, the other way around. Wait, what? Like on this side? Hold on. I have to use my phone for the stream. Yes, that's exactly it. (laughs) Okay. And so then the circle would be on the other side? Yes. (laughs) Okay. I'm an adult. Look what I can do. <laughs> I'm playing Tic Tac Toe on Dungeons and Dragons, Mom. Cause we're playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> All right. Am I am I assuming that the X is going into this this open spot here? I don't want to force your decision. No, go uh, put it into the spot that leads to our side. That leads to so this right over here. Uh, right. My thing's delayed by, like, half a minute. Oh, okay. Uh, the side closest to the dude standing on the bridge? Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, is it, was that all the X's? No, that wasn't all the X's. Yeah, the last X will connect it in the middle. Uh, I'll put my next O in front of the one that I just put down. So... Left column, second row. It would have been helpful if I named it like ABC123, but you know. Easy as one, two, three. So now we're putting the the last X in the the final spot, completing the the tic tac toe. Mm -hmm. Yes. That'd be great, oil. As you plop down the final X into into the game board, completing the game. A lovely little tune fills the air as you slowly awaken, disorienting haze clouding your mind. It was the middle of the day a moment ago, wasn't it? You rise from the bed fully clothed, yet memories of how you arrived here escape you. The same wood floors, the same stone walls, nothing out of place except for a small bit of parchment which simply reads, CCE. Admit one. Congratulations. Ah... 
Maybe we weren't supposed to finish the game? Maybe the oars were supposed to win? Maybe? Run through the rooms! Oh, sorry. Do we, what, do we know what CCE stands for? Nobody has any idea. All right, run us through the rooms. Yeah, you go through all the rooms safely um, with the DC so low now on your your fourth attempt at the bear trap room. You can safely tra- pass it without any issues. So you don't have to roll for that one anymore, at least. Uh, and you God. arrive back at the tic-tac-toe room. All right. So. I like chess better. I'm thinking let the olds win this time. Okay. And if that doesn't work... We ended it. Maybe we ended in a draw. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, yeah. What's on the board? I, I want to put it top down. I try. I try to walk across the plates. Uh, you can attempt to do that. Roll me an acrobatics check. Oh no. What did you roll? I got a three. Really? Wait, a three? Well, I got a, I got a five, but. A five? Got, hang on, let me um, let me cross reference the table here because I'm, I'm not sure exactly what happens when you roll a five. Oh, wait, no, a lovely little tune fills the air. Uh, as you slowly <laughs> awaken, a disorienting <laughs> haze clouds your mind. It was the middle of the day a moment ago, wasn't it? You rise from the bed fully clothed, yet memories of how you arrived here escape you. The same wood floors, the same stone walls, nothing out of place except for a small bit of parchment which simply reads CCE, admit one. Congratulations. So it seems to me that one of us dies, we will get sent back here. So that means in order for us to get out, we all have to be conscious and alive. Yeah, sounds sounds about right. But uh, maybe no venturing off by yourself and trying to walk across it. And to be fair, she fell. I mean, who knows what would have happened if she succeeded. So this time, let's get to the tic-tac-toe game. Let's end it in a draw. All right. All right. Assuming everybody agrees with that plan, do we want to just fast forward time to that end state? I'm not going to make you play a tic-tac-toe game and figure out how to put it in a draw. Yes. All right. Preferably, thank you. Absolutely. Feeling smug and confident, uh, you place the last piece, which will result in a tie game. Uh, And once again... A little tune fills the air as you slowly awaken. A disorienting haze clouds your mind. It was the middle of the day a moment ago, wasn't it? You rise from the bed fully clothed. Yada yada yada. You rise in a CCE. Accept one. Admit one. Congratulations. Uh, maybe not a draw. And X is don't win. Maybe win. it just needs a path right down the middle. Like we don't finish the game. Yeah, just put a path. I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah, I do want to sit. Uh, uh, well, I'm gonna let. I'm gonna let them sit here. They just came up with an idea, and they're they're waiting to see if that idea relieves them of this hellhole that I've put them in. So now I'm just gonna. What is this? It's a tepa 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 chito, non-alcoholic craft pineapple and coconut. Or even is, is a commercial now. <laughs> Sponsor. Oh, that is pretty good. Not a sponsor. Tepaquito. Whatever. Uh, speaking of good. relief, I'm going to be right back. Give me like two seconds. I got to go bleed my snake. Hey, go bleed your snake because I'll be here narrating exactly what happens. And you may have heard it before. Uh, so you place the first three pillars. The X first, then the O, then the X. And nothing happens. Okay. I'll try to step across the pathway in front of us. Yeah. Yeah. They're, the pillars are solid. They don't feel like they're going to give away under your steps, and you can carefully step across, and you reach the other side of the path. All right, what do I see? You see, once again, another red door. And there's nothing else around me, correct? 
No, there's no tripwires, no cobwebs, no chests, no swords, no ancient ruins, no uh, runic anything, no art pieces. Um, All right. I jiggle the lock. Or the, you jiggle the, the lock on the door, the and it feels unlocked. I'm back. What happened? Uh, right. They put the t- pieces down, and Chase has stepped across and has jiggled the knob, and it feels unlocked. <gasps> All right, so who wants to go through the door with me? Uh, I'll go. All right, we step through the door. You step through the door. (laughs) Are you about to run into a man in a pumpkin suit? As you enter the curious shrine, The room's peculiar ambience captivates your senses. At its center stands an intricately carved statue featuring a man clad in an unusual pumpkin-themed suit. To his sides, two b-boy skeletons strike dynamic poses as if engaged in a mysterious dance. I move over to the, whatever you called it, the thing. Oh, there's a a door leading out. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna see if that. I'm gonna jiggle the doorknob before. (laughs) 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 Anybody else see that? That Looks a lot like Trish. (laughs) She is deeply upset the dogs one moment. (laughs) So, uh, I'm going to jiggle the doorknob while I'm trying to focus. Sorry, Trish just likes to break into my room and uh, be her chaotic warlock self. What's up? What was the, what was determined? What are we doing? I'm gonna test the doorknob to see if it's locked. The door seems to be unlocked. I... <laughs> I love the pain on your face. You're like, it seems like it's unlocked. <laughs> Why? Right, before you do anything, I know how to speak to these kinds of people. I start moonwalking toward, back towards him, and then I do like Saturday night fever. Just I dance with him. I do a little jig. <laughs> TBD, you gonna join in? I just want to see what's gonna happen. I'm, I'm very small. Start discoing. <laughs> As, as you begin very small discoing, <laughs> the door swings open. <laughs> the power of dance, it always is the language that everyone knows. <laughs> and I just start like shimmy sidewalking out. <laughs> Do you shimmy sidewalk like into the other room? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so standing before you is a, a grim and chilling sight, a morgue. The room's entrance is marked with an air of foreboding, and the da- door seems different from the others you've encountered. The atmosphere is unsettling, but nothing appears out of the ordinary. Uh, Faradir has moonwalked through the door as, um, as uh, Tabidi and uh, Gruko are left in the uh, shrine, still dancing. Would you I'm like to follow him in? I'm following in. Okay. You quickly close the eyes. Yeah. I'll jump. I'll jump into the next room. You're going to jump into it, Kaylee? Are you going to... How are you entering the next room? I contemplate... Why are we here? Who is still this? Still going. Who still is going. Silent, but decided to put us through this. But I sit there, just going. And I think to myself, why... Why, oh why, are we here? Why do we keep dying? <laughs> what is wrong with me? Why is my name Tabidi? Why couldn't I come up with a better name? <laughs> Tears start 
going down my cheeks, ruining my makeup. I had makeup on before, now I don't. <laughs> I grab a hold of TBD's shoulder. Look, lass, we're here and we are suffering pretty badly. But I'm gonna tell you something. We're gonna suffer together and we're gonna get out of this together. I look at Gruko. I say, that doesn't make me feel better. And I run into the next room before he can <laughs> say anything else. Like into the next, next room? <laughs> like into the next, next room? No, I run into the morgue because we still got to figure out what the fuck is in there. Oh, um, gotcha. No, I, I thought you already, you disco danced into the morgue already. Oh, yeah, sure, you I, run in, I run into the next, next room because fuck this morgue, I'm out. <laughs> All right, you swing open the, the next door, um, which is unlocked. Uh, you all are starting to learn because uh, one does not simply walk through the morgue door and you have to do anything but walk through the morgue door one of you discoed, one of you moonwalked and one of you jumped, so clever, clever <laughs> you are giving me so many ideas to mess with my players. They should get you for the next Soul movie. <laughs> oh boy! Oh no! If they're watching this, beware. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Ah. Right, I, love, like, I see you guys' reactions, and I love looking at chat, who is simultaneously hating and enjoying it in their own ways. Oh, oh god. my god. Uh, we've reached the part of my script where uh, I have apparently failed to finish my notes, so... Oh boy, here we go. Uh, this hall is immaculately preserved, showing ornate wooden paneling and elegant pillars. Uh, the room exudes an air of sophistication, uh, intriguing you with its lavish bo beauty. Not booty, uh, maybe booty, but mostly beauty. Uh, ahead of them are three equally luxurious do doors. Doors, doors. I can't speak now, apparently, either. Uh, the, the, the song is getting to me. Uh, each adorned with a unique inscription. Um, the room, the blah, 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 blah. The left door reads, behind this door is a blazing fire. The middle door's message reads, behind this door lies a shocking revelation. And the right door reads, um, behind this door lies a new beginning. So we got from left to right. Uh, sorry, I fucked this up. Beh the left door says a rebirth from the ashes. The middle door says a shocking revelation and the right door says a new beginning. Mm. I'm gonna roll an intelligence check real quick because I want to see if my character would fucking think. Uh, if we're gonna do anything, do not pick a new beginning. I if... agree with that. But wait, what if we all went through each of the doors at the same time? Well, that means if one of us dies, we all start back again. That's true. Not it for the fire. Ah, uh, I mean, always love a Barbie. I'll do the fire. <laughs> I guess I'll take the shocking revelation. Oh, me. I'm going to a new beginning. All right, I guess we're trying. <laughs> all right, we'll go from left to right. Faradir walks up, and this will all happen simultaneously. I'll just narrate it once and one at a time. Faradir opens a door, uh, revealing a much larger space than you're used to. Uh, much, much bigger. It's, it's like an opera house, like seating, like rows and rows of seats, each standing what appears to be some man in a pointed hat. Uh, and you see points of light light up like lighters at a concert. Um, and you quickly realize as these point lights begin getting bigger, and bigger, and bigger, and bigger, approaching you. Right. This room has thousands of wizards who have all just simultaneously cast Fireball at your location. <laughs> oh God, no! Uh, you, you can roll to save, but can I can... I, can I roll to roll, shut the door? Roll, boy, roll. <laughs> 
Maybe you can roll to shut the door if you'd like. What would that be? Uh, dexterity saving throw. <laughs> okay. Oh. oh my god, for the love of god. No! That's a five! Alright, well, we'll come back to you. The middle door, once again, is a large, much bigger location. This time outdoors in a forest. Um, similarly, there seems to be some people hiding behind trees in the distance. And you begin to hear thunder approaching over the hills, uh, hillside getting louder and louder and louder. And you realize there's a storm cloud standing right above you as thousands of druids have simultaneously cast Call Lightning on your can location. I, can I avoid that right quick? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and roll a dexterity saving throw. All right, all right. And uh, what, is it, what is my uh, modifier? Uh, it'll be, so above your skills, there's a box called saving throws, and there should be one that says dex. Um, it'll be your dex modifier, and if you are proficient in it, it'll have your proficiency bonus too. Plus three, no proficiency. Okay. I rolled. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I've got a six. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my fire, my lightning. <laughs> To, to BD, you open the door and you're kind of like wincing, not really wanting to look what's behind this door, knowing kind of what's about to happen. And you look over to your companions and you see Gruko bathed in a blue green light. You see, <laughs> you see Faradir bathed in a bright red glow, panic across both of their faces as they go to slam the doors in front of them. But the doors just begin kind of in slow motion, disintegrating before their very eyes, enveloping the room in lightning and fire. And before it fully engulfs you, you take a look back to your room to see what surprises lay before you. And you see what appears to be a carnival? As a lovely little tune fills the air. As you slowly oh. awaken, disorienting haze clouding your mind. It was the middle of the day a moment ago, wasn't it? You rise from the bed fully clothed, yet memories of how you arrived here escape you. The same wood floors, the same stone walls, nothing out of place, except for a small bit of parchment which simply reads, CCE. Admit one. Congratulations. All right. Okay. Um, is this a ticket for the carnival? It could you be. You know what? I think it might be. Fine, are we supposed to go to the carnival? Let's go to the carnival. I have all. Uh, Let's go uh, to the I carnival. I love that. We could get a funnel cake and some cotton candy and oh, not get burned. Cotton candy. Can, take it for the carnival. Can, can um, we play with the lions? I love the lions. I love the lions. And can I just have a hug? Gruko goes over to the corner of the room, and he gets into a beetle position, and he's like, "Can it stop you? Can it stop you?" <laughs> Well, Tabidi stands up, which isn't much difference, but still. So she stands up, she looks at her companions, and probably the first thing she said that doesn't sound like a whisper, she's like, guys, I'm not sure we're doing this right. <laughs> I feel like the rooms are endless. I don't think we're ever leaving. You know what? You know what? You what might be right. What if we just go back the way we came? What if we all fall asleep? I mean, I'm game. I jump into the bed and put the cover over my head and I go, night, night. I follow. And I... I just say, if I wake up back here, I'm just gonna give up. <laughs> so I guess we all fall asleep. Did I hear that Jonah is gonna go on his own, or are you all falling asleep? No, 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 I'm going. I'm going into the bed too. Okay, gotcha. So you all lie comfortably into your beds, pulling the sheets over your eyes, closing your your eyes, hoping that when you wake, open them again, this torturous hell will be relieved. But as you lie there, sitting in silence, the breath of your companions sort of filling the room with your uneasy breath quivering, hoping against hope, 
this stupid fucking song just piercing your head will not go away. No matter how much you try to sleep, no matter how much you try to fight it, the song just, it almost seems to get louder and it just drives you insane. The stupid piano you've been hearing this whole fucking time, where is it even coming from anyway? Every room you go into, except the fucking one with the pumpkin guy? What even is that? Who is, is who am I, are you supposed to know him? I uh, fucking just, where is this sound coming from? It comes from everywhere and nowhere at the same time. And you're sitting there in the bed, fucking tired of this madness, just ready for it all to end. You look at your swords and your knives and your scythes and your daggers and your weapons and you think, could I escape it this way? No, I would just appear right back here. My only hope is the carnival. Let's go to the carnival, lads. And... Okay. I, I just want to say during that whole tirade, in my mind, all I could think of King Julian was, how long is this going to take? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been such great sports. And, I truly appreciate it. Not you, but like them just laying there waiting for something to take them and something to happen. <laughs> oh, but all right, yeah, let's go to the bloody carnival. All right, zoom us through the rooms. Oh my god. All right, you you reach at this point. You're professionals. You get there, no problem. Uh, you stand looking at the door that says behind this door lies a new beginning. Thinking of all the twisted, dirty fucking tricks, the one that you thought you had no problem, that soon turned out to be the answer. And you open the door. Then the music does change. It becomes clearer, more pristine, more high quality. As you open the door. Revealing what appears to be a carnival. As you cross the threshold of the door, the ceiling above you gives way to a blue sky. Oh, let me actually open the door. This room's not finished. I'm sorry, I fucked it up. So just go with me on it. Um, it gives way to blue sky under red and white tents and rows of casks, flags, hats, shirts, and other merchandise adorned with Coca-Cola branding. In the middle of the room, <laughs> under the largest tent, stands two polar, polar bears, one of which stands on his hind legs. Oh, congratulations! You've made it through the extraordinary journey of the Coca-Cola experience! Did you enjoy your visit? No! I didn't want to join us! Let me tell you what! I have never... I didn't want to death so badly in my life. And I... I am going to swear off Coca-Cola for the rest of my life. After this, I hope the Arctic melts. Oh, I'm... I'm sorry if you're feeling confused and upset. I, I deeply regret any distress we may have caused. Uh, if you'll allow me, I can shed some light. <laughs> All right, before, before you do that, uh, can I have a Coca-Cola? I'm, I'm really thirsty. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm just gonna have one this one time. <laughs> sure, let me get one as I explain. You see, the Coca-Cola experience is no ordinary attraction. As you entered, your consciousness embarked on an ethereal voyage to capture the power of your mind in, in ways by, beyond comprehension. Uh, and you look behind you and, and the doors are just like gone. Like it's, it's just like a fairgrounds. You, like, you're just like, where the fuck did we just come from? We designed this attraction to be a catalyst for self-discovery and growth, pushing you to confront both the joys and struggles of your past. You see, we understand that the experience might have been challenging, and for that we, we do sincerely apologize, but our intention was never to cause harm, but rather to unravel the complexities and consciousness and distill it 
into something memorable and refreshing. The Critical Colada, our new line of uniquely personalized flavors of Coca-Cola made specifically for you, as he hands each of you one. See, the beauty of this experience lies in its potential to foster self-reflection and introspection. By braving the hostility and enduring the obstacles, you had the chance to embrace the positive memories while leaving the negatives behind. It was meant to be a therapeutic exploration, an opportunity for visitors to gain valuable insights into their own minds. And as you depart through the teleportation circle over there, we hope that you carry with you the lessons that you've learned, both the highs and the lows. Take them as stepping stones towards a brighter, more resilient future. And remember, life is a roller coaster of emotions, and it's the sum of our experiences that shapes us into who we are. We thank you for being a part of this experience, and we hope the memories you've made will forever add a special fizz to your life. So please, enjoy your critical coladas as a token of our appreciation for embarking on this journey with us. They are both a testament to your strength and a willingness to engage in a unique experience. And he kind of holds up his own and, and cheers you. Cheer him back. Clink. I ask him if he has chalky milk. <laughs> He'll go ahead and swap out your critical colada with a, a critical chalky milk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I, I have three questions before we go. Anything. First, if we go through those teleporter things, we're not going to go back to the beginning, correct? Correct. If you go through the teleportation circle, you will leave the fairgrounds. Second um, question, is you being alive tied to those portals? I'm me, Nolan's not understanding the question. Do the polar bears have to be alive? Oh, if, if, they, if they survive, does the teleportation circle stop working? Yeah. Uh, he's he's going to be like, oh my, I, I mean... I, I don't know if you know much about teleportation magic, but not necessarily, but... Boy, I hope it wouldn't come to that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right. Since that's a solid maybe, I'm going to go ahead and X and A the last question. What? Wait, wait. <laughs> Before you do anything, I just got to get something off my chest again. Um, yeah. Whose idea was Trish? So, the previous, um... She just are, wait, are you asking me or are you asking the bear? I'm asking the bear whose oh. idea was Trish, and what the heck is Florida? Trish? I don't believe... He looks at the other polar bears who aren't anthropomorphic at all, but he looks at them like, Did we put a Trish in there? Huh? You know, the, the mind creates what it wants to create. Uh, I can't say that we've designed anything in particular about this experience. It was more a creation of your own minds. Hmm. Well, I, I'm going to go stand near the portal and just wait for anything to happen. Nothing in particular. You go ahead and finish your thing now, uh, Uh Before I... Uh, yeah, that sounds great. Uh, before I do... Uh, do you have anything you'd like to say before we go? Um, DVD. Sorry. Yeah, DVD. I was, I was like pointing down because you're tall, small. Yeah. Um. I. Uh, I'm pretty hungry. Are there? Is there food? Uh, and he'll he'll hand you some more. Coca-Cola themed snacks that all bear the, the critical colada branding. It's pretty clear as you look around the room that like it's kind of hooked up in some alchemical way that it's it's extracting something from what you just experienced and is infusing these foods with the, those flavors. Okay, well I eat something. I don't know what it is, but I eat something, and then I go and stand next to Gruka. Good to have you with us, Stevie D. Uh, so actually, I did think of a, a third question, 
and then uh, I will wild shape into my starry archer form of the constellation oh archer. First of all, a woman looking like this isn't recognizable to you by any chance. Looking very similar to Trish. Yeah. Yep. I just no. Right. So I walk over to the portal, and right before I leave, I'm gonna cast Tidal Wave at third level. <laughs> I hope you go wait, I know you guys can swim, but have fun! Tush! And then I jump into the portal. <laughs> Why jump? So you cast this tidal wave, conjuring this wave of water, which begins crashing down over this fairground, sweeping everything up into it, a look of fear overcoming the bear's eyes. And you look over at your friends, kind of like, we finally did it as you go to jump through the portal and you see Tabidi just kind of like mouthful with a snack like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then strangely enough <laughs> your vision fades and a lovely little tune fills the air oh, damn it! as you slowly awaken a disorienting haze clouds your mind it was the middle of the day a moment ago wasn't it you rise from the bed fully clothed, yet your memories of how you arrived here escape you. The same wood floors, the same stone walls, nothing out of place except for a small bit of parchment, which simply reads, CCE, admit one, congratulations. And that's our game. God damn it, I thought that was gonna go so much differently. 